Hi guys, my name is Sarah. Welcome to this week's makeover. It is a makeover, sort of. It's a challenge. It is, I am doing, can't talk apparently. I am doing a build for this week's video and this week's video is a challenge. Crystal from the Crafty Creature DIYs and Furniture Flips is hosting this challenge. She hosts a lot of challenges that I take part in. The winner from the last challenge, if you saw that, I'm gonna post a pic of her nightstands that she made over. They were incredible. She was the winner of that challenge and is also co-hosting this week's challenge. Mel from The Colored Caboose Creation she is my friend. If you are a long time follower, you know I have mentioned her on this channel so many times. She wanted to do a pet challenge, some sort of, it doesn't have to be for a four legged friend, it could be for aquatic, it could be reptile, it could be the four legged. Whatever you wanted to do, it just had to be with a pet in mind. So, what I'm doing today is a build for my beautiful neighbor across the way. She has a heart of gold. She's an older lady. She's so beautiful. And she takes care of the stray cats in the area, right? When we first moved here, there were all these cats around. I was like, and then I got to know my beautiful neighbor and she was like, oh yeah, these are not my cats. People just come and they just dump the cat and leave. To me, that's insane. But she, having the beautiful heart that she does, cannot just leave them. She feeds them. She takes them to the vet when they need to. And she, and mind you, we don't have like dozens and dozens of cats. There's like, I think like four cats that sort of live in the general area. When winter time comes, she's bought them some beds, but they're just cheaper ones that you get from Amazon. And so I offered and asked if it would be okay if I built the cats a bed. So I'm going to build one and if she really likes it then I'll build another but for today's purposes I'm just trying out and building this pet bed. I was inspired by something that I saw on Pinterest. It's actually for a cat litter but I feel like it will work well as a bed just to protect them from the elements especially in the winter time. So all of that, so much to do. It's not a massive build, but it is one that I've just sort of sketched out and so we're gonna go along, <laughs> go with the flow. You know, I should get a t-shirt that says I go with the flow because that's, that's what we're gonna be doing in today's video. Enough talking, so much to do, let's get into it. Okay, I have sketched out what I wanna do in the back of my day planner. Yes, I'm old school, I have a day planner. It drives my husband insane. <laughs> because he wants me to use the online calendar, but I just find them so modern. <laughs> I have a sketch of what I'm hoping to accomplish. I have some cuts that I need to do, which I'm gonna do now, and then we're gonna pop it all together. We're gonna paint it so it doesn't get water damaged because it's going on a front porch, and then I'll take it over to my neighbor and see if she likes it. And if she does, I'll build her a second one because I think about two cats sleep on her porch um, and the other two sleep on my other neighbor's, in my other neighbor's yard. So first cut. You guys, what I need to build myself next after this is a workbench. I'm currently using my painting bench as a workbench. I need to get rid of that and just build myself one that's up at least to my hip height bending over is not fun This is the 
top, the back is going to be pocket hold into the top and to the bottom. It's here, so it's sandwiched in between. And then this is the front panel, which is going to be hinged. So she can pull it down and change the bedding. And I just have to tr haven't trimmed that down yet. So what I need to do now is measure this opening. <laughs> now I had measurements. You saw my sketch, but then as I started to actually measure it out in reality, it looked weird, and I didn't like it, and I was going to run out of scrap. So I, I think I was building it too big. <laughs> I, I deal in millimeters and centimeters, and so inches is still foreign to me. But anyway, so it's a square actually. I didn't realize that. All right, so I need a square of 14 and a half by 14 and a half. I need two of those: one for this side, one for the other side. All my pieces are cut. I have now marked with a little arrow what sides need to have pocket holes. So we're going to go ahead and do that now and then assemble, prime, paint. But before I do any of that, I am going to go ahead and sand the outside uh, ready for priming because it's just going to be a whole lot easier to sand flat surfaces than um, if it's all <laughs> Assemble it. not really going to clamp it in place, uh, but it's going to clamp it so it doesn't move. So anyway, what I discovered <laughs> through trial and error, right, is when you're screwing in with pocket holes, it, it goes in at a slight angle, I think it's like 15 degrees. I don't know. Doesn't, I, <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, it goes in at a slight angle and sometimes because of that angle, when you're screwing in the two pieces of wood to connect together, the screw does pull the top panel into the bottom panel. And when it does, it can move it slightly, which then makes everything out of square. And it's so annoying. <laughs> I discovered that when I was making drawers, which you'll see in a future video. So on that note, if you're curious and you're enjoying this and you're looking forward to more builds or, and. I'm not, I'm not going to a building channel, you guys. I'm still a painting channel. I still love vintage and painted. <laughs> I'm vintage <laughs> and mostly painted. So if you're enjoying the video and the content and you want to see more like this and of my <coughs> other content, <coughs> hit subscribe and the bell. <laughs> She's lined up. Pop these in.
Right here. Yep. Beautiful. We're committed. Sew it. So this is the front. It's going to be hinged, right? And she's going to be able to pull it down and change out the bedding. I got to get some hinges from Lowe's. I'll get that later. What I want to do is cut some, cut probably a couple of strips, just so there's like, I mean, I know lots of air will get in through here. But just so this, it's not too stuffy in behind here. I'm just going to cut cut this down a little bit and then space them just so there's some slats along here. You'll see what I mean in a second. Just going to glue and staple these two bits and adjust them so there's some air can flow in. Okay, so what I need to do is get some hinges from Lowe's to sort that out. Then I'll glue and staple, or actually I could glue and staple those now. I feel like that's a bad idea, so I might wait. Because <laughs> the hinges I'm, I'm not 100% sure of, but. but it's coming together. All right, I'm gonna build the base and then I'll go to Lowe's. Right, to build the base, we're flipping it upside down. I'm going to be using scrap as well for the base. And I'm going to do the same design on the base that I did for, if you remember back when I lived in New Jersey, I made over a display cabinet for Samuel and I built a base. And basically it's just like a rectangle on each side. So that's what... I'm going to do now for this, so I'm going to see what I've right. got. Welcome to my out of control <laughs> wood hoard that's behind my staging wall. You guys don't see it because it's behind the wall, but anyway, I want to build a real, actually I have a an idea to build uh, like a mitre for my mitre saw, I like a table that it can sit up on top of. And underneath will be um, my wood supply, so it'll be a two a twofer. I found these. These are from my uh, kitchen table. If you haven't seen that makeover, I'll pop it here. You can take a look at it. Actually, no, I won't. I'll pop it in the description. So this were the sides of that table, and these are the ends. I have a second one of these. So I'm going to cut these up, make the legs out of these. And Bob's your uncle. Yeah, quarters of an inch. So we need fifteen and three quarters. Take away one and a half. You know what I'm gonna do to make my life easy is cut these little ends off. Support for my channel comes in many forms. Right now, I just want to thank my channel members yeah. for your ongoing support every month. I appreciate it. And not only that, just connecting with you behind the scenes and your encouragement and your questions and all of that. I really, really enjoy connecting with you guys that way. And just wanted to give you a I shout out and say thank you. Two more. One, two, all right, and that'll slide in there like that.
one inch nails to and my tight bond glue I'm gonna nail and and tack it into the top I don't think I need to screw it the cats are not going to be that heavy wasn't going to but I've decided it's probably a good idea just because it'll be outside and there'll be cats in it. I have some Minmax polyurethane and semi All Alright, I had to take her to Goodwill. She's going to a murder mystery party. And she had to go find a costume. So, I went to Lowe's and got a new toy. It is a Craig Concealed Hinge Cabinet Jig. Alright. I won't make you watch me read this. Hang on, I'll be back. Honestly, I read the instructions and I got more confused and so I threw the instructions out and just guessed. And I worked it out, so my guessing was not too bad, I guess. <laughs> I am going in with my base layer of DIY paint in weathered wood. So I have affiliate links for the DIY paint. If you are interested in trying DIY paint, check out the link in the description below and order that using that link. Let Debbie know and when you order, it lets Debbie know that you've been watching my channel and I get a commission from the paint that you purchase. So thank you in advance. Ignore that. <laughs> I decided to fill in some grain, but now that I've done that, of course I've had another idea that I want to do on the side. As you do. <laughs> you can't see it. DIY paint in Queen Bee. If you are enjoying this content, I'm so glad I work really hard to find projects that I think you guys would enjoy. And you know what? To be honest, I just like having the company. I love having you guys in my workshop every single day when I'm working on the project. So 
If you could hit that thumbs up, that would be amazing. And I'll send you a virtual hug. Thanks. Love ya. Alright. I am going to put these off cut pieces of carpet I need to trim this down that I got from the Dollar Tree for $1.25 <laughs> these were two different mats I wished I could have found two the same like this but I couldn't so it is what it is but I'm going to glue this one on Let's spread that around okay so it's the green one it's gonna go there I did decide that I was going to use type on just along the top and down the side to join the two pieces together. I think my reasoning for just doing it along the top is to um, because the cat will probably pull down when it's scratching itself. So, and I'm using the accelerator on the opposite thing. The glue is on the wood. Okay. I swear it's a pencil. That's exactly eight. Okay, my drill. Where is it? It's not big enough. Need the next size up. Okay, so the hole's been drilled. I'm gonna wait because I did some patching here that I didn't like. And when that's dry, I'm going to paint it with the weathered wood. I also patched some down in the legs there as well. And then I will top coat everything in the polyacrylic that I've got in flat. Let's use a brush. Pop the hardware on. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, okay. Really like the hardware. It goes lovely. And yeah, done. Then I'll be done. And I can show you guys the finished result. I'm pretty happy with it. It's rough, but it's okay. Sort of Frankensteined it together as I went along. I had a general idea, but then I added this piece here and this piece here because I should have done that to begin with to make everything come up. Why didn't I think of that before? I don't know, but there you go. But yeah, I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. Not too bad. Okay. I may have decided to change the hardware <laughs> to this guy. We'll see. I did like the other one, but then this is sort of modern, you know, and felt like the other one was a bit more farmhousey, if you will. Oh, sorry. Hang on, I need my stirring stick. I said I was using flat before, but I'm using Minwax Polyacrylic in satin. And I'm going to put on a nice thick coat with DIY paint, I think because of the cl clay in there it sort of needs a thicker coat but I'm not too worried because it is very textured because of all the layers that I did so nice thick coat coat will be good and I'm gonna but not too I mean thick yes but not crazy like you don't want lots of drippage in.
yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think of this piece. I would be curious to know. Dry. Okay, so curious. This is after a good thick coat, right? And I just sort of cleaned up where there might be a little bit of drips. And this is what it's like drying, right? The top coat is soaking into the clay paint and it soaks at different pieces. And you're going to have lighter and darker patches. All of that is totally normal. I'm going to come back in tomorrow and it'll be all one color. And then I'm going to do a second coat just to make sure. Um, it should be okay outside. Debbie has painted a fence with DIY paint and not top coated it. And it's lasted for years and years and years. Once the DIY paint fully cures to the 30 days, it's... Uh, it's not, it's not coming off for anything, love or money. <laughs> it's on there. So that is completely normal. It's all done. It's dry. The patchiness that I left you with is completely gone. It looks great. My neighbor is away for a couple of days, so I can't give it to her today, but that's okay. I will give it to her. If you don't already, you can follow me along on my socials and I'll post an update of it on her porch and maybe Tom Tom <laughs> will jump right in it. Maybe he won't. I don't know. They're strays. They're not predictable. So, and they don't particularly like to be touched too much, except by my daughter. The, she must be a cat whisperer. The cats absolutely love her. The rest of us are allergic to cats, <laughs> except her. Anyway, I had so much fun. Thank you, Crystal, for hosting and Mel for co-hosting. So the winner of these challenges gets to co-host another challenge with Crystal. So good luck to all the other participants in the challenge. I am sure their pieces are going to be amazing. I will link a playlist to all the other participants in the description below. Make sure you go down into the description, check out that link and binge watch everybody else's. I certainly will be. While you're there, you can check out my other links. I have affiliate links for the Starbond glue that I use and of course, DIY paint, if you do that, appreciate it so much. It certainly does help me out every little bit, it certainly helps. So support for my channel, like I said, comes in many forms. And I just wanted to say thank you so much, you guys, for the comments, the likes, the subscribes. Had a little influx of support lately and I just really appreciate it. Thank you so much you guys. I am not here next week. Just as a reminder, last week I let you know that I'm doing a video every other week. I will be back the following week with a makeover. I will see you on the next one. I love you to pieces. Be kind. Be safe. Bye you guys. If you enjoyed this challenge, I have a playlist of challenges that I've participated in and you can find it here.